What's up guys, it's BT here, and this is the review of the highly anticipated Cooler Master MM710. I, like many of you guys, saw this mouse unveiled at Computex, and since then, I feel like it's been in the back of all of our minds because of its promised 53 gram weight being one of the lowest on the market. This mouse for my testing has the potential to be a real contender, but there are some things that definitely need fixing for that to be true. So today, find out if the MM710 has what it takes to compete with the top dogs in the space. Coming in at $50, this mouse has an amazing competitive price. In the hand, it doesn't feel like they use cheap plastic at all. The matte coating feels really nice, even when your hand gets a little bit sweaty. They also have a glossy version of this mouse for those of you guys with drier hands. And they also have a color that's in white. It has an ambidextrous shape that weighs in at 55 grams with a little bit of cable added. The 53 grams quoted by them was probably just the mouse with no cable added so mm, you're adding a bit about two grams when you add the cable into this mouse speaking of the cable it's got a cable that they are calling the ultra light ultra weave cable i have to say that this cord is just as good as a paracord just take a look for yourself it's definitely better than the ultra light 2 or any of the other ones like the Ascending Core. I think this one's actually better than those. One con could be that they have this weird blocky opening that might make it difficult to add your own paracord. Let's just say, for example, you want to match your setup with the paracord, then you'll probably need some more rubber material to keep the paracord in place. They've also got those PTFE feet on the bottom, one long one up top, two short ones near the back. They glide great on all surfaces, but they are best on hybrid pads. Now, the standard cloth pads, you won't really feel a difference there. They feel kind of like any other pads, but when you move over to a hybrid pad, you're definitely gonna feel it. Uh, and I'll link some of my favorite ones down below, including the one that I used in Mad Cat's Glide 38. They aren't hyper glides good, but they are good. Continuing on with the build quality, it's got six buttons. It's got a mouse one and two, two side buttons, a scroll wheel, and a DPI button. And this is where this mouse starts to fall apart for me. Let's start with the mouse one and two. They rattle and can be moved around slightly. You have to, like when you're having your fingers resting on them, you can kind of like move them around. Let's do a sound test for you guys right about now, okay? It's okay. <clears throat> okay, and now the scroll wheel. Let's do some scrolling so you guys can hear what this sounds like. Mm, not the best, very harsh, and you definitely feel it when you're scrolling back and forth. Um, also, when you're making a lightweight mouse, you also have to be careful about side flex because Case in point here, when pressing in the sides with a little bit of pressure, the buttons actually trigger on the left side. So let me try to show you guys here. It's not good. Also, when putting down the mouse, you can hear all kinds of rattling. So. So I don't know about that. Then they've also got the DPI button up top, which is hard to press. It's not the best button, but uh, it is hard to press. Now the side buttons as well here, we're gonna do a sound test of those. Mm, they're okay. They have this kind of pyramid like line that goes through both of the buttons. I would have liked to have seen them do like a flat button, like a Logitech G703 comes to mind or like the final mouse. I would have liked to have seen them do that kind of design instead of having this raised edge here because your finger can slip to either side when trying to press it. It just feels like this mouse needs a little bit more finesse with the stability of the buttons to take this from a good mouse to a great mouse. As for the shape, the best way to simplify this mouse is that it is a thick with two C's, shorter version of the Zowie S2 with a bigger hump. Now the hump makes this mouse almost impossible to palm grip. It just shoots your fingers over the hump and it's very, very hard to lay your palm on it. Relaxed palm, maybe. Uh, it's more of like a relaxed claw, I would say. Okay, so moving on, where this mouse really shines is for the fingertip grip users out there. The middle part isn't tapered in on the mouse, so you can really keep your fingers in a straight line on the mouse instead of getting some strain by having your pinky and your thumb squeeze in, which is kind of nice. Everything just stays in line and keeps your wrist in line, which is paw. This mouse is also great for claw grip users because of that hump, and it just works so, so well. I love it. It's very comfortable for long, extended periods of gaming. 
Size wise, this is very similar to the Ultralight 2. It's slightly longer, just slightly, with that bigger hump. Now, shape wise, I do prefer this over the Ultralight 2 for my 19 by 8.5 centimeter hands. So if you were in the camp where the Ultralight didn't work, but you want something slightly bigger, you don't want to use those infinity skins or what somebody said was diaper skins, this mouse will probably work for you. Overall, I say this is a small to medium mouse and it being closer to the medium size because of the hump, it takes away some of the length of your hand. Now the sensor is a 3360 sensor that can go up to 16K DPI. It performs great in game, no issues on the surfaces that I tested, even on the rated. Yes. On a side note, one thing that I found is that mice tend to have problems with aftermarket feet and difficult services. I think the distance from the sensor to the services changes and that's why you might run into problems or at least that's been my experience in the past. Now there is no software for it yet I believe but the DPI steps seem to be as follows 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. In game I loved using this mouse even with its small quirks. Uh, it still gets the job done. It's really lightweight. It's easy to move around uh, Especially like if the ultralight 2 was too small for you This is the next step and the weight feels great. It's evenly balanced. It just feels like a good mouse But like I said those buttons just They're so close It's frustrating. This is a frustrating mouse because you want to love it But there's some things that it's like why like the just a little bit more finesse on it and this mouse would have been perfect. All right guys, well that's gonna do it for this review of the Cooler Master MM710. It's a good mouse with a few quirks that keep it from moving into that S tier, that upper echelon of mice right now. Uh, hopefully before the launch they can fix some of uh, the issues in the production of this mouse that will make this excel and be able to compete with the new amazing mice that we have coming out. Alright guys, it has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.